Welcome back to part two of the four-part airbending staff how-to series. In the last video, we created the shaft of the glider, including spaces where the wings will fit. Click the link in the description below if you'd like to review part one. Now we're going to build the slats that support the wings of the airbending staff, as well as the hinges that they attach to. Here on my desk, I have all the supplies that you'll need. The first things that you'll need are a whole lot of metal rods and wooden dowels that are all 36 inches long. We have 8 quarter inch square dowels made of wood. Any wood will do, but I've opted to use red oak for the whole project because it stains nicely and feels hefty and substantial in the hand. In addition, we need 7 1 8 inch diameter mild steel rods. I've also purchased two stainless steel tubes with a 1 8 inch hole in the end. That's just big enough for the rods to slide inside, which is important. I have one 36 inch brass rod here, also with an eighth of an inch diameter, four pieces of wooden molding, which are two and three quarter inches to a side, we'll use these for making the hinges, and a whole bunch of number eight washers. Let's set aside the brass rod, as well as one steel rod, because we're not going to use them for a long time. Then we're going to take two of the wooden dowels and two of the steel rods and cut them into evenly sized one foot pieces. Now we're going to take all of the steel rods, the ones that we just cut into pieces and the ones that we haven't cut, but not the one that we set aside. And we're going to use the bench vise to curl the end into a loop. <laughs> will all start to look about the same as each other. You'll also get the size of the loop right so that it just fits over that eighth of an inch rod. Now, when it comes to these stainless steel tubes, we'll also be putting a loop in the end of them, but that'll require slicing a little bit off the first inch and a half of the rod. So it'll take a few more steps. turn our attention to the wooden part of the slats. For each one of these dowels, I'm going to put a long groove straight down one side. This is going to be just big enough that I can exactly house one steel rod inside. When we combine the steel rods with the wooden dowels, it'll give the wing supports for the glider the look of wood but the strength of steel. There are multiple ways to go about this. Hand tools are time consuming, but are certainly an option. Alternatively, you can build a jig with a quarter inch gap where you can tape your dowels. This allows you to run the dowels down your table saw and let the saw blade make the groove. This is the method I use for most of my slats. The saw blade is set very low, only one eighth of an inch above the table. You could also throw out the dowel idea entirely, starting with a quarter inch thick plank instead. In this case, you use the table saw to make the groove first and then cut off a square dowel out of the grooved section. This is the quickest and most convenient method, but I find that it produces slats that are slightly curved. It's true that when you put the steel rod in the groove, it will correct most of this curve, but this just wasn't good enough for my inner perfectionist. The table saw blade makes perfectly sized grooves for steel rods, but it's not quite wide enough for the two slats that will have tubes inside them, so I used a rotary tool to widen the grooves for these two. 
If my airbending staff had a rectangular shape like Aang's, then I might be ready to put the dowels together with the steel rods at this point. However, my design calls for a circular staff, and this is going to require a little extra shaping to the wood before we're ready to assemble the wings. Each wing is built of three slats. I round the slats on either side in order to give a circular profile. The middle slat is also shaved down and made thinner in order to keep the groove down the middle of the uh, airbending staff, which I will fill with mother of pearl later on. As before, there are multiple methods to shape the slats, depending on what resources you have available. Hand tools would work, or you could round the corner of the slat on a belt sander. A bench grinder would get the job done too, but the quickest and most consistent results will come from using a roundover bit on a router. If you chose to make your slats from a plank instead of dowels, you could route the edges of the plank before you even make the groove. I used a bandsaw to give the flat pieces a shave but a planer, sander, or bench grinder would also work just fine. Okay, now it's finally time to glue the metal rods and the wooden slats together. This part is really easy, but it does take a little bit of planning. Start by organizing the slats into four groups like this, like semicircles with rounded pieces on either side and flat pieces in the middle. These two groups will make up the small wings, and these two will be the big wings. I've taped the steel rods into the wood to simulate the way that the slats will hang on their hinges. Now we're going to take this slat and this slat from the small wings, as well as this one and this one from the big wings and set them aside. Now on the big wings you'll notice that these are the slats that have uh, tubes instead of steel rods inside them. We're not going to glue these until the very end of the entire project because I'm going to glue the fabric for the wings inside with them. The rest of the pieces are okay to glue now, but when you glue them, make sure that the steel loops are on the same end of the dowel as they are now. If you glue one in backward, then it will end up looking really awkward instead of having a nice rounded profile. It'll end up something like that, like it's got two left feet. To connect the wooden and metal parts of the slats, start with a bead of glue down the length of the groove. Any glue will do as long as it can stick to both metal and wood and it has some flexibility when it dries, but I'm personally fond of E6000. Place the steel rod inside the groove and tape it in place. Check to make sure the rod is aligned properly. You want the loop to be parallel to the straight edge of the wood. Finish taping the rod in and double check that you haven't lost the correct orientation. Since we turned part of the steel rod into a loop, you'll notice that it won't go the full length of the wood. I've prepared short segments from the brass rod that we set aside earlier to fill the gap. Why didn't I just start with a longer piece of steel? Aesthetics. The metal needs to stick out about a quarter inch beyond the end of the wood, making it visible, and brass just looks better. I also beveled the ends of the brass pieces to make them better looking and easier to handle. Now that the slats are finally finished, we can go ahead and start building the hinges that they'll attach to. We make the hinges out of these pieces of molding. From one corner to another, we're going to put a shallow groove, which is going to fit right into the staff fitting perfectly over these skinny pieces of the staff so that there will still be that three quarter inch gap which we need to put our slats in later on. I recommend using the end of a belt sander for this shaping. Work gradually and check yourself against the glider shaft to make sure that the width, depth, and orientation are correct. The fit between the shaft and hinges should be very snug. Once you're finished shaping the hinges, stack them on top of each other in pairs. Measure perpendicular to the groove that you just made and mark them at 5 eighths of an inch from the center on both sides. Drill straight through both hinge pieces at the points you just marked. I strongly recommend using a drill press for this 
because if this hole isn't made at a perfect 90 degree angle, it could seriously impact the function of the glider wings. With the hinges still paired like they will be on the final staff, choose which way is going to be up and which way is going to be down. Mark a point near the corners of the up sides of each piece, then drill through that point with a small drill bit parallel to the future orientation of the glider shaft. Countersink the holes on the up sides with a larger drill bit. These holes will eventually be part of the mechanism to lock the glider wings in an open position. Now that we're finished shaping these hinge pieces, we can go ahead and assemble them on the staff like they'll be when it's finished. I've used some extra pieces of steel rod in this case. When I'm done, I'll replace them with brass, but these will stand in fine for now. Use your washers to space apart the slats and keep them from rotating in the final design. There's one more thing that we need to finish these hinges. As you can see, there's an open space here, which will allow the wings to open indefinitely. We want to stop it a little bit earlier than that. So I'll make side pieces like this. They'll fit right inside there and block that wing right as it gets to 90 degrees. Here's a close-up look of that. At the bottom of the staff, the block is shaped a little bit differently. Since these wings are only meant to go out about this far, I've built the block with a stop in an L shape to prevent the wings from going out farther than they need to. Each of these blocks has a groove in it, which complements the grooves that are in the staff, as well as in the slats, but it only goes part way. There's a small slit at the end close to the staff which will become important in the locking mechanism to keep the wings open later on. To ensure that the blocks are the right thickness, go ahead and make them out of scraps from the middle of the glider shaft. The end of the blocks that will be adjacent to the shaft should be made concave for a better fit. With that, we've built all the functional pieces we need for the slats and the hinges of our glider wings. I'd love to go on and glue them right in place now, but there's actually one more thing we have to do first. So I'm going to leave this video as a cliffhanger. We've gone long enough already. And in the next video, you'll get to see me glue this in. Thanks for watching.